Over the past year, a lot of stakeholders in Buncombe County, to include the Sheriff's Office, Asheville Police Department, the District Attorney's Office, Mission Hospital, Health and Human Services, just a cadre of folks, uh, to include Commissioner Holly Jones, have been working together to try to come up with a better best practice for how we deal with cases of domestic violence. What 2013 really showed us here in Buncombe County was that that problem is increasingly getting worse. Uh, in 2013, we had five intimate partner domestic violence homicides. So with the conversation that had been going on, which was really highlighted by those tragedies in, in 2013, uh, a group to include retired judge Rebecca Knight came together to draw empirical information and really look around the state as well as the country to look at best practice models that were out there in place and working to reduce those intimate partner domestic violence homicides. I'm, I'm very excited that in Buncombe County we have identified not one model but several models that are rendering great results in other communities and we're going to bundle them together and bundling them together I think we were going to make a strong statement that we have had enough enough violence against women in this community and that offenders will be prosecuted and they will be punished for for violent behavior we have a very strong community in the area of domestic violence. We have specialized domestic violence court. We have agencies such as Helpmate and Our Voice who help victims. Uh, we have an aggressive prosecutor's office who uh, attacks domestic violence in the courtroom. Uh, the clerk's office helps with the civil restraining orders and domestic violence. But we have found that there's a need to improve those services and reach out more to victims. Uh, so we've developed a comprehensive plan that has basically five points of attack on domestic violence. One of those is the use of a lethality assessment across the board in our community and we've selected the Campbell lethality assessment. It is a 20 question assessment for victims to complete and based upon their answers and based upon extensive research by Dr. Campbell from John Hopkins University, we're able to identify those individuals who are at a high risk of being murdered or have an attempted murder and there are services and interventions we can then put in place to protect them. Uh, within Helpmate and also within our community partners, we will be conducting an evidence-based lethality assessment protocol uh, where we'll be asking a series of questions that's designed to predict the amount of risk that each survivor has of potentially being a victim of homicide. Um, so we'll conduct those at every entry point uh, to our service system on our crisis line when people come to our shelter, when people come in for counseling or court advocacy services. At any point that we encounter a victim, we're going to sit down with them and have a conversation about the level of danger that they're experiencing and the level of risk that they have. That information based on a tried and true researched method for predicting violent behavior from perpetrators will give us a much clearer picture of what that victim's risk looks like so that we can provide the most appropriate support uh, needed for that family. It brings a lot of education, it brings a lot of light, it brings a lot of follow-up for law enforcement on that lethality instrument, on that assessment tool after it's completed with those offenders. There is a shorter lethality assessment from the Maryland model that is for first responders and law enforcement to use in the field. And so one of the goals of our program is to train law enforcement in the use of that lethality assessment in the field. And if an individual is marked as a high lethality risk, then there are protocols put in place to get help to those victims. We're also looking at a high-risk domestic violence team, which is from the state of Massachusetts who did a program and implemented this multidisciplinary team to 
track high-risk cases, they have two functions. One is to contain the offender so that the offender cannot commit new acts of domestic violence. And two is to assist the victim with safety planning and resources. Public safety has to be our number one priority. As I've looked and, and, and learned more and more about the epidemic of domestic violence, I started looking for the best practices in other communities. Uh, and I came across this in, my, in literature review, uh, a model that had had some powerful impacts in Massachusetts. And so very quickly, I passed along this research and this model to uh, staff at Buncombe County. And no surprise to me, but uh, Mandy Stone and Rich Munger jumped on it immediately. They saw the, the, the possibility for returning those powerful results that had happened in other communities to our community. And, and as I say, uh, then things really got rolling. What I'm excited about in this initiative is the dual focus. There are components of it that are about the containment of the offender, ensuring that the victim's safe, ensuring that the community's safe from that individual. And then there are also components of it that focus on the victim safety and how we provide the resources to support that victim in moving to a safe and sustainable independent living arrangement for themselves and often their children. Our goal is to help people be as safe as they can be wherever they are. And so we'll do comprehensive work with that, with that victim and with that family to try to make sure that there's as much safety there as possible. It's very exciting to me that we're able to do this work with closer collaboration with the other systems in the county. Uh, there's already strong law enforcement response to domestic violence, and there's strong prosecution for domestic violence here in Buncombe County. But this project will network those systems together in a way that we've never seen before. That model in Massachusetts over a six-year period, they studied the outcomes in counties with this model in place. They had no domestic violence fatalities. In counties without it, they had 249 fatalities. It's a pretty strong indication that what they're doing works, and we want to bring that model to Buncombe County. There's also a focused deterrence program for domestic violence offenders that is from High Point, North Carolina, that's been very successful. We've already implemented some High Point focused deterrence programs in Buncombe County, but uh, we're going to bring the domestic violence piece as well. They've had some great research and data to support that their program works. It brings in all domestic violence offenders, not just the high lethality risk offenders. And they've been able to drop their recidivism rate to 7.4%, which is very remarkable. Keeps their community safer, and we want to do that here as well. We're going to set up a special court so that we will have one judge who monitors the cases. We also will have information sharing amongst different groups that are involved in domestic violence so that we can present the court with accurate information as to what the best approach in these cases are. These cases are identified as high-risk case where the offenders have been identified as people who, because of their behavior in the past, because of their behavior currently, that they present a high risk to the community and to their families. And we will give them special attention in this court, which will meet on a regular basis, have the same prosecutors, have the same judges signed, so that we will have a continuity of how we deal with their case. There is a model in High Point called Focus Deterrence. And basically that is a model where the offenders get called in and they get offered some help in the way of counseling, maybe job help with job placement, different things that contribute to that piece that, that results in that domestic violence. But also, they're sitting there in front of their police chiefs, their sheriff, their DA, and we also communicate the message that we know what's happened here. If this happens again, you will get no help. You will get the full brunt of the law enforcement system, and you'll be held accountable. We currently use this structure with our violent criminal offenders that we call in and, and use this structure to deal with them with hopes that they will change their behavior and do differently. By having this structure in place, uh, we can add this piece on 
with domestic violence and domestic violence offenders, and we think it's going to work very well. We've already got that structure going. It's about sending the message as a community that domestic violence is unacceptable. We won't tolerate it, that, that our values say we're going to take a stand community-wide against it. I think it's also, a, a domestic violence has a significant impact on child abuse and neglect, which is a core county responsibility as well as law enforcement. So I think it has an impact both in terms of prevention of future abuse and neglect in children and risk to victims, um, and, it, and it clearly also has the potential to reduce the calls to our um, law enforcement entities. The second piece that is really different than what we've done in the past is it will involve a monitoring bracelet that will be attached to the offender. You know, so many times our strategies around domestic violence go to limit the movement of the victim and really kind of uh, putting on the victim the responsibility of, of being safe, staying safe, where this model really addresses the offender and their behavior and what they can and can't do. And of course, along with this monitor, uh, will be a structure to respond that law enforcement will be able to respond. So if that offender gets near that victim, then we will receive a call and we will respond to it just like any other 911 emergency call that we get into our emergency operations center. We have electronic monitoring in Buncombe County with our pretrial release program. It's very effective. However, we're going to add a piece of that just for domestic violence offenders. And what's unique about that is the victim will be given a monitor that they can carry that will notify them if their offender is within their safe zone. So if they're around their home or their workplace or even if they're at the mall and if the victim's at the mall and the offender you know, just happens to come there by chance, she will be notified that he's close. It also gives law enforcement pinpoint notification of where he is where she is and allows them to get in the middle. And that way, that'll protect that victim and the community from domestic violence acts. We also are gonna implement a cross-system dialogue, which allows each service organization, uh, entity that's dealing with domestic violence issues to evaluate the strength of their communication within their own entity, and then bring everyone to the table and work on how we communicate with each other. We want to make sure that there's no information that is lost because it didn't get sent to the right person at the right time, and that will keep victims safe. If we're communicating better, if we're sharing the information we need to share, and we make sure that it gets to the right place at the right time. Working together is key to this, and that's part of why the, the model itself was so um, powerful because it has this collaborative role and we do, we do that well in Buncombe County. And, and so I, I cannot say enough about all the, all the groups and all the agencies and all the individuals that really saw the value and the power uh, of the outcomes in, in this model and, and we're, we're open to taking on more work and, and, and bringing this to our community because at the end of the day, uh, it's all about keeping our, you know, our women safe. And frankly, it's all about making uh, offenders be accountable to their uh, violent behavior. Uh, we'll also participate in the cross-system dialogues to try to make sure that we as a system are working as effectively as possible so that no matter where that victim first encounters the helping system, they get the same high-quality level of response uh, anywhere that they may enter. A lot of times in domestic violence, different agencies have different information and it's not always been shared in the past because of issues of confidentiality, because of issues of uh, certain agencies are not located in and around the court system, so we don't always see each other. But now with this new collaboration, what we're going to do is make sure that we share information, that we meet on a regular basis to talk about these cases that have been identified as special cases that need the extra attention. And I believe that will allow us to better serve the victim in these cases, better serve the community by making it a safer community, better able to tailor the punishment so that it will fit exactly the needs of each criminal defendant.
I think that the initiative um, is an example of what Buncombe County does best, which is come together across systems and agencies, sh look at how we each bring unique talent and resources to impact a significant issue or challenge in our community, how we set benchmarks and outcomes and are driven to achieve those, and, and that how we all share that best interest of the community and the safety of all our citizens. I'd just like to express my gratitude for the leaders in Buncombe County that have made this initiative possible. County Commissioner Holly Jones um, really envisioned this program and um, it's through her leadership that it's coming to fruition. And I believe that, I know that it couldn't happen without leadership from our Sheriff Van Duncan, from Asheville's police chief, from Mandy Stone. There's a lot of people who have really put an amazing amount of work into creating a better system for safety and security for victims of domestic violence here. What I would most want the community to know about this is that every member of the community has a role to play. It's about all of us standing together and saying, enough, we're stopping domestic violence in our community, that we, we demand a community where every individual is safe from abuse. And that that's the piece that I would most want the community to know. It's not just about agencies or the courts. Those are all significant components of it, but it's about everybody who lives or works or plays next door or close to someone who's experiencing domestic violence in their life. A lot of communities are really struggling with domestic violence issues and the increase in the violence. And I'm unaware of any community that's taken all these different programs and implemented them at one time, especially without the benefit of federal grants and special uh, hiring additional people. So uh, what we've done is research what are the best practices in the country, what works, is it evidence-based, and then trying to figure out how to blend it into the existing services we already have in Buncombe County to make a compre comprehensive plan that will work for everyone. One of the reasons that this issue is so important to me uh, is because I have a daughter and I want her to live in a community that is a safe community for her uh, and her friends and their mothers and their grandmothers. So this is, this is kind of the powerful impetus behind um, my initial energy to, to, to see what, what we were doing here in Buckham County. Ultimately, the goal for this program is for women to feel safe in their communities, and have peace of mind. In the, in the long run, we also hope to, to look at pre preventing violence from the very beginning. And this will start with, with our children. But I'm very excited about this, the start that we have um, and that we're about to embark on. <music>